Hi and welcome to the video. My name is Paul Greenwood and in this video I'm going to be taking you through a beginner's guide to Adobe Premiere and all the things you should know when it comes to approaching video editing. Let's get straight into the video guys. So when you first open Adobe Premiere Pro you're going to be faced with something that looks very similar to this. I would recommend before you start creating a video is to create a folder on your desktop or somewhere on your computer with a little folder inside that with video and add all your videos that you're going to be editing in there and a audio version of that and just add some audio tracks in there as well. I've added a Premiere folder as well and that's where I'm going to keep all my Premiere Pro files. To create a new project within Adobe Premiere, click the button on the top left hand side. We we'll want to navigate to the desktop, so I click on desktop on the left hand side and navigate to that folder that we've been creating already. Double click on that and navigate to the Adobe Premiere from here, make sure we've got these import settings all turned off for now because we're going to go into the project and create these from scratch. Once you've got this far, you need to click on create. If you don't already have a copy of Adobe Premiere Pro, head to the first link in the description and grab your copy now. So inside Adobe Premiere, you may see something similar to this. If you've been inside Adobe Premiere before, it may look slightly different. To get to this page, you need to go to workspace and assembly. We're going to be using three different workspaces today. We're going to be using Assembly, we're going to be using Captions and Graphics, and we're also going to be using Editing. If you are inside the Assembly workspace and it doesn't look anything like this, go to Window, Workspace, and click on Reset Saved Layout, and it should reset it back to how this looks. Inside the Assembly window, there are three main panels. Panel on the left hand side is our project window. This is where we import all our media like videos, audio and graphics. Top right is our program window. This is where the video will play and preview when we're doing our editing. And the bottom right hand side is our timeline. This is where we're going to drag our media from our project panel into our timeline and start editing that down. Here in the middle, you have your editing tools. And the main one you probably use is the selection tool and the razor tool. I find the easiest way to import footage into your project is to go to your folder on your desktop where you've organized all your video and your audio and just drag in the folders to your project window. Now here on your left hand side you'll see that you've got your videos and your audio files all organized in these handy little folders. Within Premiere Pro, these are called bins, and you can create bins or folders. Just click on this little bin icon at the bottom there, and it will create this new bin. So now we've got our video and our audio imported into Premiere Pro. It's time to create a sequence. So let's go down to this button here that says New Item and click on Sequence. This little bit here can be quite confusing if you don't know what you're doing. I find that the best settings to use if you're getting started is to go into Digital SLR and use a 1080p 24 frames a second. The reason for this is everything is already set out for you and if you want to go in and change some of the sequence setting later on, you can do. So I'd click on the 1080p 24 frames and you can name your sequence if you want. So we're just gonna add that as tutorial and press okay. Now you've created your sequence, you'll see it appear up in your project window up the top on the left hand side here. You also see on that the preview window has turned black and the timeline on the bottom right is now available for adding footage into as well. If you ever want to make any changes to your sequence in the future, click on your sequence, click at the top on sequence and then sequence settings and here you'll be able to change all sorts of things like the size of the sequence or the video and also the frame rate if required. Now that we've created our sequence and sorted out all our footage ready to be edited, I'm going to hop over to the editing tab now by going to Window, Workspaces and Editing. Here is our editing workspace. It's important to quickly just go through the different layout of this workspace. On the left hand side now we have our preview window and on the right hand side we've got our program window. The preview window or the source is where we can preview our videos. So we're going to video and we double click on any of these videos it will pop up in this left hand side and you can play through the video preview it before you put it into your timeline so if you're not sure what something is you can just double click it and it will appear on the left hand side 
And once we drag that into our timeline, so we just drag it down onto our timeline, it will then appear on the right hand side because this is the program window. So when we do our edits, this is where the edit will show on the right hand side. You can also preview audio in this top window as well by double clicking on that and you can play through the audio by clicking the play button there. Also, once you've got your footage onto your timeline, you'll see this effects control tab here. Click on that and click on our footage. We get some options for our footage as well. We can change the size of the footage by dragging it left to right. Drag it left to make it smaller, right to make it bigger. Click reset to make it 100% again. Same with the position, so you could left is left and right is right on the video. And the second one here is up and down. So again, you do left, you're gonna take your footage up, right is gonna take the footage down. And if you want to reset that anytime, just click on this reset parameter here and it takes it back. There are a couple of ways to add footage to your timeline. The easiest way is to drag and drop the footage onto the timeline. To play the footage, click on this play button here and it will start to play the footage. As you'll see, the timeline here has this blue line going from left to right. That's an indicator of time, and this is the playhead. Wherever the playhead is on the video is what's kind of playing at that moment in time. So when it's right at the beginning on the left-hand side, you're at the right beginning of your video. So when it's right at the end of your footage like there, it's at the end of your footage. And this can go on for quite some time. If you want to zoom out, click on this little dot here, and drag it to the right hand side and the footage will zoom out and if you drag it to the left it will zoom in. The second way to add footage to your timeline is to double click on your footage in the preview window on the left hand side and you can add in and out points. These are these marker points here, mark it in and mark it out. So if you play your footage through and you decide on a part of the video that you want to add, so let's say we want to add from when he gets, when his arms pass his body there press at the in point and if we scrub to the right so just drag it to the right we think that's enough footage and we like that part we click the out point and you see you've got this grey band now and if you want to just drag that piece in just the video only click on this little video symbol down onto the timeline like so this piece of footage here doesn't have any audio but when it when it does you'll be able to drag the audio only down as well. So if you just wanted a bit of voiceover, you could drag that down as well. The next way to add footage to your timeline is just to select all of the footage and just drag it straight onto your timeline and it'll add the footage in a sequence straight onto your timeline. You can cut and trim footage down in a couple of different ways. The easiest way is to drag the end of the footage down to the desired length. So let's say we wanted that at three seconds, we drag the footage to suit both from the front and the back until it gets down to about three seconds. There's a little indicator below the footage which shows you how long the footage is. Another way to chop down your footage is to use the razor tool. So click on the razor tool and you can chop the beginning and the end of your footage. You don't need to worry, it's not gonna damage the footage. The footage will always remain the same. You can chop the beginning and the end off by clicking delete. And you can then move around your footage you then want to make it smaller again like before you can drag that bigger and smaller and get it down to the desired length third way to chop down footage is if you want to use the playhead to chop down the footage so drag the playhead to the bit that you want to chop and if you want to chop to the left of this playhead you press q on the keyboard and if you want to chop to the right you press w on your keyboard now that we've got the hang of editing your footage down in the timeline, I'm going to make a small sequence by bringing in an audio file, similar to before, I'm just going to drag that in, and it's going to go below this thick line here. So the audio always goes at the bottom and the footage always goes at the top. I'm just going to drag this down and you'll see the audio waveform slightly bigger. And we're going to edit our video to these beats here. So we'll start bringing in the footage and we'll start editing down and then we're going to add a title sequence. Now that we've got our footage roughly laid out, I'm going to add a couple of effects to the footage. And to access the effects, it is here on the left hand side under the tab effects. 
and we're going to go into dip to black so in the search bar just type in dip as you can see it comes in the dissolve section I'm just going to drag that onto the beginning of the footage as you can see it changes color to this little sort of green color you can see that it's dipped to black so when we play the footage back now you'll see it go from black to be in the footage if you wanted to adjust the length of that let's zoom in I'm going to drag that brown band all the way over to where that kind of first beat comes in. It's just made it slightly longer. If you want to add other video transition effects to your clips, just go into the effects library, go to video transitions, go to dissolve, and a very popular one is the cross dissolve effect. Drag that onto your footage like we have done with the dip to black. Play that through and you'll see the effect. Now that we've got our transitions all done and our sequence all edited down, we're gonna go into our text panel and add a title sequence. To do that, go to Window, Workspaces, and we've got Captions and Graphics. So click on that. And now inside our Captions and Graphics workspace again, and it's slightly changed round again. So just to orientate ourselves, on the left hand side, we've got our text window. On the right hand side, kind of in the middle, we've got our program window where the footage plays, like before. On the right hand side, we've got our Essential Graphics panel. This is where we're gonna be changing things like font size, position on the screen, color, and all that kind of stuff. Down below, we've got a timeline still, and we've also got our project and our effects, just like in the previous workspace. To add a title to our video, we're just gonna get the playhead right back to the beginning, and we're gonna use this type tool here. Click on that, and we're gonna click anywhere on our program screen here. That should give us some options on the right hand side. As you can see, all these options have now popped up. I'm just going to add our title in here. I'm just going to write the word freedom because our video is about running and freedom, I suppose, is something that you feel when you run. Okay, so we've just added that text in now. So selection tool, we get to drag this around the screen. On the right hand side here, we have our essential graphics panel. In here, we can change things like our font. Let's change the font. And we can change the spacing and how it appears on the screen. So we can align it to the middle. We can range the text left or right. So range it to the middle and align that again. I'm also going to add a bit of character spacing. Okay, and make sure that's aligned to the middle. And to edit how long it is on the timeline, as you can see there, it's added a little layer. You just like you did before with the video, you just drag the length of the clip. I'd like to add a fade in and fade out effect to our text here, but unfortunately we don't use the effects panel like we did before, we actually use the effects control panel on the top left hand side. So if you click on your text and click on effects control, we're gonna use the opacity, which the opacity is how see-through an item is. We're gonna animate the opacity to come in from zero up to 100%, and go back down to zero again just as it goes over to the next clip so we're going to start at 100 percent there and what we need to do is add one of these toggle animation buttons here so we're going to click on that and it's added a keyframe to the left hand side of our timeline now we're going to scrub the playhead over a couple of frames And then we're going to add one of these little buttons here, add remove keyframe. We're going to add one in there. And then we're going to go all the way to the end of the clip to there. I'm going to add another one there. And we're going to bring it back to, you can see these little markers, we're going to bring it back to there and add another one there. So we go back to the beginning. We're going to drag that down to zero. And as you see, it's going to fade in because this next one is set to 100%. It's going to stay at 100% till we get to there. We're going to fade that down to zero. So when we play it back through, you'll see that it fades in and it fades out. Now that we've created our title sequence, we're going to copy that and make an end sequence for the same thing. To do that, I'm just going to click on the freedom block there, press Alt on my keyboard and drag it to the right. Rather than having to create it again from scratch, we're just going to create an end sequence one by amending the text to whatever we want it to be. Now that I've got the end sequence finished, I'm going to fade out the audio in time with 
the end sequence. To do that, like the other clips, I can drag in the audio file and it should snap to the end of my text sequence there. Just check if you've got this magnet snap to timeline switch on to make sure that it is snapping because it'll just snap straight to the end of anything that you've got above it. So I'm just going to snap it to there. The plugin I'm going to use or the effects I'm going to use is in the effects panel. So go back to the effects panel and it is in the audio effects and it's constant power. So audio transitions it's in crossfade constant power. Drag that onto the end of the clip like before I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to drag that brown bar in time with the fade out of the thanks for watching. A couple of last things to show you in this tutorial would be how to change the colour of your footage. To do that we're going to go into a different panel again, go to Window, Workspaces and Colour. So like before when we change workspaces, some of the layout does change and notably on the right hand side you'll see this Lumentary colour panel here. To change the colour of your clip, hover your playhead over the desired clip that you'd like to change. Click on the video clip that you'd like to adjust and go into your Lumentary colour panel on the right hand side. Make some micro adjustments to the colour to try and make it suited to all the different clips within your scene. Colour is very subjective and within Hollywood they use colour to change the mood of a scene depending on what's going on within the story. Make some adjustments to Eclipse and get a hang of doing the basic colour grade so you can add some extra level of dynamics to your video making. Once you've finished editing your sequence it's time to export your video. To do that head up to export on the top left hand side of the screen. In this dialog box I would recommend going to video and clicking match source and that will match all the settings that we did earlier to full HD 24 frames a second. Look in the audio and make sure you've got audio switched on and that makes sure the audio plays as well as the video. A very common format when exporting videos especially for YouTube is the H.264. I would stick to that one as a recommended go to. Once you're happy with those settings go down to the bottom right and hit export. Now that we've finished and exported our video in Adobe Premiere, it's time to play it through to see how it looks. I hope you got something out of this video, guys. If you did get something out of it, smash the like button and remember to subscribe to the channel. I will see you in another video. Thanks for watching.